Hi, I'm Susie Rhodes with Past Masters. Welcome to this week's questions of the week. This week, our topic is equity securities. You can expect this topic to appear on your SIE exam, Series 6, Series 7, and the Series 65 exam. We're going to take a 10-question topic quiz from within one of our Past Masters Securities courses. Let's check out our learning management system. SEC Rule 144. Choices include requires the registration of associated persons. Let's say we're not sure. Is the financial services industry's privacy rule? Definitely not. That would be Regulation S-P. Sets forth the guidelines for an intrastate offering. That would be an offering that is being made in one state only. That's SEC Rule 147. Governs the sale of restricted stock. So it's in between those two. Requires the registration of associated persons. No, that's the Securities Exchange Act of 1934. It is SEC Rule 144 that governs the sale of restricted stock. It also governs the sale of control stock. So what you're going to do is you're going to click the correct answer, what you believe is the correct answer. You'll click check answer. It gives you the green check mark if you're correct. Within the question, you have the choice to click show explanation. So our questions are going to have a written out explanation. You also can click the audio explanation. SEC Rule 144 governs the sale of restricted stock. It's me. So some people learn by listening and some people can learn by reading. Some people learn by writing, by taking really good notes. So to appeal to the various learning styles, we have both the written explanation and the audio explanation for every one of our questions within our Past Masters courses. Which correctly describes the rights of cumulative preferred stock holders? So cumulative, so only preferred stock can have special features. Cumulative, they may receive an additional dividend, they will receive omitted dividends before common stockholders will get paid a dividend. I like that. Let's check the other ones. Dividends will be paid before bondholders receive interest. No, interest on bonds is always paid first and then dividends are paid out of after tax income. They have the right to exchange the preferred shares for common. No, that would be convertible preferred stock. So participating preferred stock may receive an additional dividend. It is cumulative preferred stock where they will receive the omitted dividend before the common stockholders will get paid a dividend. So the issuer is not going to omit dividends for 10 years if they've issued cumulative preferred stock. Which correctly identifies treasury stock? Stock sold in an APO, which stands for Additional Public Offering, outstanding shares repurchased by the issuer, authorized but unissued stock, or stock issued by the United States government. Well, that sounds good, but no, it is treasury stock. Treasury stock are shares that were out there in the market that the issuer goes into the market and repurchases and puts them in their treasury. So they are not out there in the hands of the public. Treasury stock does not receive dividends and does not have voting rights. When would an issuer call preferred stock? So it's a similar concept calling preferred stock as calling a bond. So bonds have a fixed interest rate. It's called the bond's nominal yield. The nominal yield is reflective of interest rates at the time the bond was originally issued and never changes. Preferred stocks don't pay interest. Preferred stocks pay dividends. Now dividends, even on preferred stock, are never guaranteed. However, if a dividend is paid when you own preferred stock, you know because it has a fixed dividend rate 
how much the dividend will be. So same idea. Issuers will call a bond when interest rates go down enough that it makes sense to refinance the debt. Kind of like refinancing your mortgage, very similar concept. So an issuer would call preferred stock when interest rates have gone down, when interest rates decrease. Which of the following is the least sensitive to changes in interest rates? Preferred stock, mortgage bond, debenture, or common stock? So if we were to make a risk spectrum, and we'll say in the center is balanced, and then we have equities on this side, and we have debt on this side, it's the debt instruments that have interest rate risk. So equities are a hedge against inflation. So let's check out these four choices. Making a little mini risk spectrum on your scratch paper would be highly advisable for a question like this. So preferred stock, that's on the equity side. Mortgage bond, debt instruments have interest rate risk. Debenture is an unsecured corporate bond. It has interest rate risk. And then common stock. So we're, we have two types of equities, preferred stock and common. Which one has a fixed dividend rate? Preferred stock. So preferred stock would be sensitive to changes in interest rates. The least sensitive to changes in interest rates of these four choices is common stock. Which statement correctly compares penny stock with blue chip stock? Penny stock trades at $5 or more a share, blue chip stock less than $5. Mm. <laughs> it doesn't sound right, does it? Blue chip stock trades primarily over the counter, penny stock lists on the NYSE. That also sounds backwards. Blue chip stock trades at a price that is volatile, while penny stock's price is stable, backwards. Blue chip stock trades at $5 or more a share, that is true. Make sure it's all true. Penny stock less than $5, that is the correct answer. Five years ago, Joe received enough non-qualified stock options to purchase 250 shares of his employer's stock at $10 per share. Joe decided to exercise all of his options when the stock price was $25 per share. He is in the 20% tax bracket. What is Joe's tax liability? So he was able to buy them at $10 a share, but the difference between what they're worth and what he paid is $15 a share. So $15 a share, they won't let you take your phone into the test. They'll give you a basic non-programmable calculator or they will have a computer uh, calculator built into the program. It really depends upon where you're taking your test. So 15 times 250 is 3,750. I can't do math in my head. I'm an accountant. I can't do math without a calculator. Times 20%, $750 Joe's tax liability. Which of the following is true about treasury stock? It represents issued shares that have been repurchased by the issuer. Yeah, always though on the test, don't pick the first right answer, read all four choices. It is authorized stock that has not yet been sold, no. It receives dividends, no. It carries voting rights, no. Treasury stock does not receive dividends and does not have the right to vote. Only shares that are in the hands of the public or in what we call the public float receive dividends and have voting rights. Remember, it's common stock that receives the voting rights, not preferred. Common stock has the rights to vote. Which type of equity security may be converted into shares of common stock? Debenture, note, participating preferred stock or convertible preferred stock. So a couple of things in this question. 
So we're looking for a type of equity. A debenture is debt, so it's not that. A note is debt, not that. So we're left with participating preferred stock or convertible preferred stock. And the answer is right in the question. And that is sometimes how the test is. Many questions are much harder than this. Convertible preferred stock may be converted into shares of the issuer's common stock. My hope for you is a test full of super easy questions, <laughs> although most likely you'll have a few easy ones and then some more challenging ones where you have to read the whole question a couple times before you read those answer choices. So just be prepared for that. Which type of security has best kept up with inflation over a period of time? Preferred stock, corporate bonds, common stock, or US government bonds. So is it debt or equity that is more likely to keep pace with inflation? Definitely the equity side. So the two types of equities that we have to choose from here, preferred stock and common stock. Common stock is a residual claim on assets. It is the bottom of the barrel. It is who gets paid last in the event of a corporate liquidation. It is also the most likely to keep pace with inflation, common stock, the best hedge against inflation. That's it for this week's questions of the week. Topic was equity securities. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up if you learned something. Subscribe to our channel if you're not a subscriber already and turn those notifications on. If you have any questions about this topic, just ask me in the comments below. If you'd like to check out Past Masters Securities course offerings or to enroll in one of our programs, there is a link found in this video's description. I hope to have you as a student soon. Keep up the good work. Happy studies. You got this.